Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Tim Kell of T. Kell Knives. Tim started T. Kell Knives in 2020 and quickly rose to prominence in the knife world with his very carryable, capable, and I will say charming tactical fixed blade knives. I became a huge fan of T. Kell Knives when I started carrying its flagship Night Stalker ringed fixed blade half, if not most days. Then the Night Stalker and a few other classic blades from history inspired a design that I showed Tim and the Agent series was born. We'll talk about that collaborative process and find out what's next from T. Kell Knives. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And of course, if you want to help support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered. Your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. Tim, welcome back to the Knife Junkie podcast, sir. Always a pleasure to see you. Yes, sir. Great to see you. Great to hear from you. Great to be a guest again. Again. Well, it was a it was great to be a guest at your table at Blade Show this year. Uh, it was really fun. The year before you were swamped, this year you were swamped, but I had a more oh, personal yeah. stake in it. Um, yeah, tell us about Blade Show this year. I mean, the biggest news was the release of the Agent 001. That was our big thing. And man, I think it sold beyond mine and your expectations. It was I, every year we go on a blade show, I'm like, you know, the honeymoon's over. We're not going to be as popular. And it's more and more and more each time. So the industry's embraced us. You brought an incredible blade design to it. And man, we brought it to life. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the agent series in a second. Cause of course that was a soft lead in. I was like, Hmm, tell me what was the biggest news from, uh, I didn't mean it quite like that, but, uh, you have not been around that long. T Kell knives has not been around that long. Right. Uh, but you're kind of uh, like the industry name in carryable fixed blade tactical knives that you can actually carry. Why is, is that? Weird. I think that's what I was looking for when I set out to make blades. I always had a want for a good grip, low print. I just didn't want to be able to see it. And I didn't think that you needed to have a full grip, like a big monster handle, to be able to have a capable blade that you can keep on you every day. I don't want people to see what I've got on me. If I need to cut pizza or if I need to go to work or if I need to defend myself, I just want to be that undercover kind of guy. So that's really what led everything. And I didn't have stuff that I liked. So I just made things. And you know it. what I thought? I thought, well, it's not only like the kind of low profile aspect of the knives and the handles. Um, you know, a lot of your knives give you just enough handle. And that's what I love in a carryable fixed yeah. blade knife. Uh, but also uh, you specialize in the most slick and retentive sheaths ever. I, I didn't know how to make a sheath. And I didn't understand why people made things the way they did. And that the handles are the same as the sheath. I didn't get why don't we have a clip that clips this way? Why are she so thick? And I, I didn't have to unlearn all the knives that I had ever handled. I just didn't like them. So I set off on my own to create the, it's the purpose driven and you know, that grip and that carry style was what designed the whole line because I couldn't find it. Well, I, I love that. And that's like, um, what did I say? Ness necessity is the mother of invention. I right. just kind of flipped that around, but necessity is the mother of invention and coming into it. You weren't, necessarily a rabid knife collector no. um obviously we can tell from your background uh, you are now a collector of your knives but also a collector of other great things uh that we know and love and you know how to put those things together how to how to build these kind of things before we go on to the agent series and what's happening right now just give everyone a little background on on your abilities to machine i actually am self-taught machinist i started out hand grinding everything and then it's a funny story i went to a local shop when we started to grow and i said hey 
I need to make more than 12 knives a week because people want them and I'm not selling enough to survive. I've heard about machining. And the guy looked at me and he said, if you're serious about this, you're not going to pay this shop because it'll be crazy expensive. You'll buy your own machine, teach yourself to machine, hand me his business card. So that day we had gone to Costco. I'm looking around, supposed to be getting my eyes checked and I'm researching, you know, good starter machines, ran into Walter Soil's stuff on mm. uh, Tormox, called them, got the thing, and three weeks later, it shows up in my driveway. And I called that guy who gave me his card, Jeremy, and if you watch our lives, you'll see he's on the lives as he's machining. But he said, I said, do you remember me? He's like, uh, yeah. I said, well, I got a machine in my driveway. And he's like, are you insane? And I'm like, I am. <laughs> And I said, can you help me put this thing together? And he's like, I guess. So he came over, camera wife and I almost had the battle of our lives as a married couple rolling this thing down our hill on our property to my shop on four inch PVC to get it into the shop where I <laughs> killed each other. And he came and helped me put it together. And I tried to teach myself how to do it. And he was showing me stuff he's like, you're crazy. I had to teach myself how to do CAD cam. He came over and did a few things and we moved it to the basement when it, the, the climate was just too bad. So just outside this door is the basement shop and my wife and daughter would be flipping the blades on the machine and I'd be out in the forge heat treating wow. and a bunch of splinters. And then basically we were growing too fast to be able to sustain that. So I called that guy. I'm like, Hey man, I'm going to sell this machine. I'm just going to outsource. He's like, wait, wait, wait. So then he says, let's put it in my basement of my townhome. And I'll just discount the payment on the machine and make your blades for you. And he was still full time at that shop. And then here we are. Five years after that, he's bought a piece of property to put five machines in. We just broke ground on doubling that again. But this was in the middle of the woods and it wasn't even a house on it. I'm an electrician. I went and wired the thing and he was living in an RV, sold his townhouse just because he believed in TKL. And then now he's built him a nice house and he's got this giant shop and here we are wow. making these thousands and thousands of blades. And he's in Tennessee and I'm in Georgia and they're about this far apart on a map and about 11 miles. Oh, wow. That's and it's, cool. it's crazy. It's, it's nuts. We have, uh, I, I, I have to give a shout out to someone who comes on Thursday Night Knives, uh, Stephen Clayton Jr. and yes, his son sir. Joey. They are awesome. That guy carries like at least 10 of your knives on him every day. I believe he's, we had 13. I know. He's That's an crazy. awesome guy. Uh, and it was really nice to, to meet Joey. Uh, but I mean, you have a rabid fan base. You're not just a knife maker who has people collecting your stuff, you have an actual fan base. And, That's the and, best part about it. How? Why? What do you credit uh, your quick success to? Uh, my wife. <laughs> Just she, we would start out. She said, look, people ask all these questions. Let's make YouTube videos to explain those things. People like being around you. I don't know why. And she said, let's just put you on camera and answer these questions because we're getting killed with emails. So it started that way. And the camera took to me and she would have to rein me in because of my crazy humor. And it just grew into this monster. And both of us really love people. So those things combined where I, in person, on camera, on the phone, in the shop, her and I are the same as we would be any other time. So that passion for the customer comes through in the the videos that we make and that's all kind of helped us grown helped us grown uh, we don't <laughs> do english that's not part of the prerequisite <laughs> at all um, but it's i guess we're personal and i don't i didn't you know this i didn't know the knife industry so i didn't know how you're supposed to act how you're supposed to do things how you're supposed to treat your customers we just wanted to be stupid about customer service because we had been let down by companies mm -hmm. and from a standpoint of is this the best fiscal decision to just replace this or bend over backwards and do what we have to do for the customer no but what's happened through that is that's turned those customers into repeat buyers and friends and 
our our friend community has gotten really big and it's growing fast. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you did it right. I think uh, also uh, just a um, tip of the hat to camera wife. Uh, we'd probably all be cavemen without our, our <laughs> wives yeah. or many of us. Many of us would be. I mean, we have good skills. They have good skills. Put them together and, and that's the best uh best way to go and you know kind of my wife and i love to throw parties um we love to have we both have big families especially my wife and they live close and and our invitations and seem to get lost in the mail <laughs> seems I to mean. have but my point Ooh. is uh, that that's what uh, being at the tim kell booth is like at, at i'm gonna say it's a dinner party because we're not chowing down but we are uh, all there gathered around the knives and you and and you and your family back there and the people who work for you back there like give it a great environment and um i don't know it's a it's a great feeling other than just having knives and that's really what we all come for um it's so nice to have great people behind the counter that's what we enjoy it's the people for us and you know i don't yeah. know if no nobody else is doing that i just know that we're always going to do it that way and people ask me how how, how big are you guys going to grow and i i say you know until it feels like we're not going to be friends with our customers. And then that's it. It's, it's not a number. It's not a, whenever we buy our first Lamborghini, because that'll never happen. My truck <laughs> needs an oil gasket now, but it's just for us. It, it's that community. Oops. So I started, uh, started carrying this, Tim, uh, you sent me one of these. I ordered a combatant from you, which I love. I just changed up the carry on this. Uh, I, I ordered a combatant. You're like, no, no, no. You do have to check out the Night Stalker. Because I was kind of right. like, yeah, I like the yep. Night Stalker. It's cool, but I'm not so into ring. You sent this to me. This became an immediate favorite. And I'm showing it like this in the sheath because uh, with the DCC clip, I carry this. This is the first knife I ever carried legitimately, um, you know, right where my belt buckle goes. And I can drop yep. a, um, a T-shirt over it just like a... a a, a little light t-shirt and this is totally hidden and i started carrying it all 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 the time and then um i came to you with this design based on the dimensions of that design um because i i love i love the old uh loveless uh double-edged fighters i love um what do you call it like bayonets and bayonet ground i don't know yep. i wanted something that fit in the carry profile of this um that had your your language um but that had those those elements um so uh i guess what i'm i'm trying to say is uh, we came up with this and you did a lot of engineering to make um the drawing happen and you did a lot of um redrawing of the handle tell me about what it was like i, I don't know receiving the design and then where to take it because you're getting the design from a dude who loves knives who likes drawing knives and you're a guy who I makes a lot knives. of those what's that I get a lot of drawings like that. And the first time I saw it, I was like, yep, we're doing this. It, uh, I, I love the blade immediately, immediately. All right. So you, you get that design, but you see issues with the handle. I know um, you saw the handle. You're like, oh, that looks a lot like the, um, there, there are a number of knives, but the one that, that resonated with you, it looked a bit like the dis, um, uh, compliance edge knife with the with the thing on top you're like i think that's a little derivative uh and then you said right. about it with with your skills like how how did you go about uh, looking at the handle and what were your prime concerns i i think the way i like to design is i take my strength from these three grip fingers and i think a lot of times that's forgotten about and i want to be able to get a pinky wrap and i wanted to narrow that up I, uh, the easy way to say is it just didn't look right to me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I know dimensionally where my hand is going to meet it. And we've tested so many knives with so many people that it almost comes natural where I go, we need to take here, take here. And then some of the ideas that I've developed in my design where you can back cut something to give you more room for your finger, mm -hmm. but still have the full grip. That's, that's really all it needed just subtle bumps in the back to push it into the, the meat of your hand, that little radius to the inside of the hook. So your pinky still tucks up in there, but you can shorten the grip. I, I don't like the really aggressive hooks. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that was still comfortable, but still 
felt like a trigger almost where you could really get that draw. So I borrowed that angle from the six hour P229 trigger because that feel. <laughs> That's so cool. Really? This right, right here? Right to me. This part right here? Uh, well, you know, the camera's. Oh, the wrong you can't way. see. I'm talking about the pommel. So I'm going to point to this. Uh -huh. This angle here is the same dimension as when you pull. Oh my God. That's so cool. And you want a lot of finger room so that you still have a comfortable grip on anything. So when you get everything lined up properly, that that's a strong pull. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't realize you had that. Uh, it's cool. I, and I wonder if that um, lends to something interesting about this blade is whoever picks it up, they're like, Oh, that feels great in my hand. And it feels great in my hand. And I've shaken your hand. It's bigger than mine. Uh, this has gone in much smaller hands. It's comfortable. Uh, Lynn Thompson was like, oh, this is a great grip. Uh, That's a you know, huge honor to hear that, too. And you told and, me that. I was like, wow. And his hands are like twice the size of mine. So how, like, what's what's the trick to designing something that feels so ergonomic? Like, it feels like it was made for my hand. Uh, but everyone else seems to think the same thing. Is there a trick to that? I, I just get a lot of people to hold it and to test it. My wife has medium size hands you know little i know small people large people and i just i'll constantly i do this weird thing where i'll close my eyes i'll put a pair of gloves on like okay this is what it'll be like if my hand was big mm -hmm. it's just i do really stupid stuff to try to mimic different hand sizes and i'll see how much room i need and i'm like hey small guy hey large guy mm -hmm. check this out and we you know we resin print so that i can get those right and i've kind of I know the spacing of these and that hill and valley and this width that I've already figured out on the Night Stalker. You notice these dimensions are from that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know that radius in my head. So when I talk to my machinist or when we're going through CAD CAM, I'm like, all right, this radius is this, this height is that, this bump is this. Remember from that knife where we did this thing, I want to squish these together and then it it's it's painstaking. There was not a lot that I needed to do, though. You know? I, I, I think that the grenade grip, uh, this this is one of your kind of signature uh, moves here on the handle, are these little scoops right. um, off the... I think that th those also um, say that this... Say that your hand is too small for this to be perfectly aligned. I think those little um, cutouts there uh, accommodate all different yep. kind of hands and they, and they'll, and they'll draw, if your hands are smaller, they'll draw your hands into that as opposed yep. to the swales on the, that's on the exactly profile. what those are for. And th you'll notice they're angled. They're not just cutouts. Yeah. And I would tediously, before we started machining, I would touch those in and I would do that weird. Okay. It's just enough. And when I got them perfect, I took them to my engineer, but I'm like, okay, this is it. And, that depth, the rounding on those, the angles, and that's exactly what they're for. That's why on this portion of the knife, you've got one that's pointed this way and one that's pointed this way, reverse and forward. Mm -hmm. And it, and I think we had this conversation. I think the first ones I sent you were without the grenade grip. Yeah. And oh, that may have been somebody else I asked. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But I said, no, it'll narrow it up, and you'll get that full clinch once we put the grenade texture. Yeah. And they started out where... I would do a line down the center. So when you grind a line in this way with a half inch grinder, it looked like the pattern from a grenade. And I'm a Marine, so the grenade terminology made sense. Love so it. So we just kept I, it. I mean, it, it, it's on it's on all the TKL knives, I think, at least yep, all the ones is. I have. And uh, even even down to the, the FLN, uh, which I have yeah. learned to carry. This is, I like to drop this in the pocket and use it's the awesome crimping to, to just tug off and this lands in your pocket and you got it in hand. Yeah, uh, that's how shout I Shout out to Jared Neve. Um, yep. But but so uh, working working on the handle, uh, one thing that was a cool addition, this this whole area here, like I wanted the jimping and you wanted this uh, glass breaker. And I think it all worked out so well because the original yep. drawing didn't have either of those. And... Um, for for me, the the jimps are perfect. Three jimps are perfect, and for me, each yep. each set here. This is uh, uh, my wife and my two daughters, and here it's the uh, the, the uh, 
God, the father and the Holy spirit right there, you know? So I, I got oh, all my, yeah, I got a, uh, everything I need right there. Well, now I like it even more. Yeah. That's, that's where that came from. Uh, so over here on the, on the blade, let's talk about the blade because this curve here, I think this was a bit of a stymier. I, I just drew it. I didn't know that it would be difficult to do. Uh, but to, cre to create this top uh, bevel uh, presented some engineering challenges, right? Oh, yeah. The, what? They, they said, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, look. And I, I'm really bad about exasperating my machinist and my, my CAD cam, my engineer, because I'll hand them a blade. And I'm like, I just ground this. You told me when we bought machines, and then if I employed you, you could do what human hands could do, but with more detail every time. And that really bothers them because they're like, they're like, well, you just can't. Because a, a machine language and CAD CAM wants to round off and make sense of everything. But I'm literally out there grinding these things and just touching it. And, and I'm like, okay, you can't. You can't do it. And I've been accused of being a little bit of Steve Jobs and that. Like, but I can look, I did it. Mm -hmm. Why we can do it. And it 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 frustrated him. And then I remember him calling me, go, we got it. I'm like, I knew you would. And they're like super celebratory. And I'm like, all right, cool, on to the next. Let's make the blade. You know. <laughs> and I feel kind of bad, but it's I'm not rude. I just know that I'm like, we can do it. So we ended up having to do a new technique with these that we hadn't done. So we had to do, instead of our traditional 3D milling, we had to invert these and do fifth axis. So, <laughs> and they were really, really jazzed. And I'm like, yep, that's cool. Good job. I knew it. But it did. That was tough. But now some of the other later, obviously I like this design we did together because I, I'm expanding the line rapidly we've been able to use that coding that we came up with to make that sweep mm -hmm. in, in a couple of blades that are coming down line that are, they're going to be pretty special too. <laughs> so it's important uh, though, that diamond shape to keep uh, that blade where it's a diamond yeah, and push that tip all the way out. When I hand grind a knife, it's for purpose. And this thing had the danger of being really brittle at the tip. Yeah. We had to do that. We had no choice. But it's not. It's it, uh, I, no. I love looking at the knife from this aspect. Um, try and get it up to the camera. But I love looking at where the grinds meet the bevels. Uh, it's all perfect. And, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I, I hesitate to use that word, but, but I also can't find any fault with it. Uh, these things are like really really well made and before we get on to the rest of the series because i have a 002 here and i i need to catch up with the rest of them as they come out but um what i know that producing a bunch of these uh is an issue or is not i shouldn't say it's an issue but i know that you're a kind of an ever-growing company and kind of every knife you put out is is a bigger deal and a bigger deal and a bigger deal and as that snowballs you need more and more people Tell us a little bit about your shop and, and where these are uh, being made currently. So right now, this used to be, the, the this is what we call the bunker. Now, this was the shipping center, my office in, mm -hmm. in our basement. And we made all the blades. We assembled in the room next to this. And then the grinding room was outside of that. And then our barn was where everything happened. So then when we grew, we moved the machine out, moved it over to our other shop that's close to here. Now we have currently, we have a building three doors up from here where our offices are. It's a residential house. And then behind there, it's a 40 by 40 shop mm -hmm. where we do all of that now with five employees. We really need seven, but man, is it hard to find people. So we we partner with the machine shop and then we've got another one in Ohio that helps us do the grips and then we've got another two now since we spoke last north carolina and new jersey ah oh, that's so, so cool one of the dudes is super famous like he's a he makes these awesome high-end folding knives and um he helps us make the combatants and the new adversaries mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. so the community 
our community has gotten bigger, but people have come to us and said, hey, we like what you're doing. We want to be Team TKL. I got extra machines, and these guys have a name and an industry standard. So my thing was they own their own business. So do I. My machinist owns his own business. These shops are American-made businesses. I get all of my steel from New Jersey Steel Baron Steel. They ship it to all these five different shops. All the heat treat is done in the same place, the exact same way. All of the nickel boring is done. So all this stuff pours in from the, the eastern United States right now back into here where we do what we've always done. So we've been able to, and I, I tell these partner machine shops, I like, look, I want you to have part of the American dream too. You guys employ 12 people to make the machine this blade for us. So I don't have facilities big enough. So we, we have all these little micro pockets of people in these different spots. So that allows those guys that own their business to really champion their piece of the, the project. Yeah. And then they pour back into me and where we get go, no go. And I, it's just a unique way that we've done it, and it's working for us for now. We can still keep that quality that we want. Yeah. I, I like that business model. I've seen it a couple of other times on diff, uh, on maybe smaller scales, uh, but I really like the idea of uh, not only keeping it American, but also like kind of keeping it regional, like uh, tactile yeah. knives down in Texas. Everything they do, if they're not making it in their shop, is from Texas or down the street. Right. Um, uh, wind guard wearables. Small batch. Yeah. Yes. Because if five shops are making one small batch and they're perfecting the agent 01, they make that blade. We don't have them run all of our 30 different models. I wanted them to do like I did hone that in. You know, we'll go do a shop visit and make sure everything is the way we want it done. And we still get them here each step of the way. Steel beveled profiled heat treat nickel boron it, it's handled in our shop all right let's talk about the future of the agent series i have the 002 which you very generously gave me at blade show this is a prototype i think you all you said you wanted to do differently with this was uh chamfer the jimping jimping which has worked fine yep. fine for me but i want to tell you something uh so all summer long ever since i got the the agent 001 that's been my uh, on the on the waistline, this is my self defense knife. Period. But this one would be a great self defense knife. But I've been using this all summer as a great work knife, and it happened quite by accident the first time. And then uh, the first impression of it as a great work knife, besides an awesome tactical knife, uh, it, it it hardened itself in me. And so all summer long, I've been carrying this like uh, when I have anything to do. But I use this pommel as a impromptu hammer. Um, not, no, I should say an impromptu mallet, uh, yeah. all day long. We were, we were these saw these kind of plastic tiles. We were assembling this flooring and we needed a mallet had nothing. And this was perfect. And then this of course was great for all the boxing and cutting uh, tough rubber and everything with that worn cliff blade. Talk about the 002 and your idea to put this blade on the, uh, for the 002. Well, we wanted one that is. It's, it's a three inch. So uh, part of the agent series, and you and I talked about this originally, was keeping that footprint down. Yeah. One, I wanted the subsequent blades, some of them to be more compliant. So a three inch blade so that it can be carried in more places. A single edge blade that's more friendly. And I love a worn cliff. And we have a couple of our worn cliffs with this profile. Our, uh, the Guardian and the Night Guardian too, but those are a fixed beefier longer blade and then one's a ring blade but this line needed one and i wanted to i like the handle so much and it's such a useful blade in all the different grip forms that it had to have a worn clip yeah it just needed it so uh the very first knife i had from you was the guardian and yeah. uh, i love that profile it's basically that profile obviously it a is. very different style blade this is a cool knife uh very cool knife by the way uh but uh, that, unique. that, yeah, very unique. It's a splitter gouger terror, nasty. Yeah, man. Um, but that that profile is is perfect. That tip is perfect. It's it's great for precision cutting. Without uh, it's it is. I'm talking about the two again. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, it's great at precision cutting with that tip without being too dainty. Uh, sometimes I have trouble with worn cliffs because I love them so much. I eat, carry them a lot, but the tips can be very delicate. Yep. You don't have that on this. Yeah, I wanted that quick V to go up and shorter grind. And that's why I want to use the same stock because of that. I want, I like my blades to do dual purpose unless they're my double edged stuff. Double edged stuff, I just don't do anything but keep it for protection. But my single edge is like you. I'm going to cut tile, I'm going to pry stuff. So I wanted it thicker behind the edge so that we could still put a 20 on it, but keep it stout. Yeah. Because that's one of the things. There's some, some teachers that teach run a worn cliff, they cut better. When the tip breaks, replace it or regrind it. Don't worry about it. But I didn't want to have to do that. Yeah. I wanted it stout. I love yeah. that V. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a really big fan of this knife through usage. You know, sometimes yeah. things uh draw me in through looks, and this is a very pretty knife. Uh, but once I started using it, it, it changed everything for me. I was like, okay, this is a valuable <laughs> addition to my, it's not just like cool to have one because it's a TKL and it's part of that series. It's like a valuable, uh, uh, addition of my actual work knives because I have a ton of knives. Many of them, I don't press to work at all when the work comes up, try and keep this one. Uh, I'll go to town with no doubt. Uh, okay. So there's three, four, five, I mean, tell us about the rest of them. So I've got, I've been dailying my three. So the three, you'll obviously recognize that's the Night Stalker. Yeah. Same length, same profile. It's a CG thickness though. So it's the, the 165, so same thickness as the first two. But I wanted to keep that really aggressive jumping on there and that full length wedge. And this thing is absolutely nasty. It's a, it's a hell of a piercer. So that's the three. We just finished prototypes on four and five. I've got the resin models, four and five. Um, I'll have, these are done with heat treat. So it's hard to see against this background, but it's just a straight back kind that's of a shiv. And again, this is that same really difficult curve that we had to do to get this to work. Mm -hmm. Just a little two and three quarter inch kind of like a shiv just a quick little yeah four is thin so it's 125 thick it's just a clip high grind kind of a utility steak knife skinning Ooh, yeah i like wood. that clip yeah. point that looks nice yep. so super thin 125 thick we are in Very the middle of keep treating these yeah it's it's slicey so that's four and five Six is kind of a spear. So let me see if I can't get the lighting a little. There we go. So oh, it's we a go. so it's a spear point, and you can see how the light hits that top edge. Again, it's got that twist. Yeah. So <laughs> there's more meat here. These to get that diamond tip on the front end, and then it twists into back to zero. Same jumping style. Again, in the 165 thick. That so is a, that is a very pretty blade. I like. I that like blade. it. A lot of people are really, really excited about this one. And then seven, I'm sure you've seen mention of. Yeah, I think I so saw that, a prototype of this at Blade. Didn't you have this on the right, table at Blade? Yeah. Right. So this is the final. We are doing this as a collaboration as well. That's. Can I say who it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's with Tomas of Tactical Tavern. Correct. He saw the blade, your blade, and was super jelly. I want to <laughs> do a blade. <laughs> He's he so cool. I love that guy. He's such a good guy. But we, he he had some decent input on the blade. I mean, but the, the handle, I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's perfect. So <laughs> we, hey. um, and then we're working on a pacal. Yes. So we're, that's an we're exciting up to, we're up to eight. And I really am happy with the design of that one. It's sharp. Get it? It's, it's a, yeah. Good. It's also uh, in collaboration, right? With another guy we know and love. Uh, yep. Who I'm Mystery. not sure. I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Oh, Dave Everett. OG, OG Blade, Blade Works. Blade OG Blade of, Reviews. Uh, gosh. What oh, was his other name? He used to be this old sword. <laughs> That's right. And that was like two days ago and I already forgot. 
That's cool. It's a it's a series with um, input from from uh, not makers but knife thinkers. Let's say luminaries what? in the in the knife thinking world. <laughs> I love well, that. And, and people have tried to give me some flack until they see that it produces incredible blades. Yeah, a guy them. like you is is a martial artist, is in love with knives, and you've handled literally thousands of different blades. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want that input? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. Mean, and as as Jim has up here on the screen right now, you've you've speak of a famous martial artist. You've collaborated with Steve Tarani. I can't remember the other guy's name, but from Frogman Tactical, I follow him yep, on Jason Pike. YouTube. Uh, Imri, who was on this show, who's just you know certified badass and and longtime uh, you know combatant, and Jared Neve, who is all of that uh, on on a on a different level no doubt and then tomas I, I think you have a lot of very interesting people that you've uh, collaborated with uh, what do you think you get out of it um from from that perspective i think perspective and different use cases like like anytime you send me a sketch i instantly love it you've got an eye for design and that is based around your use case and your love from blades so that really I, I, I'm not the best knife designer in the whole wide world. I think I do okay at my own stuff, but I really like other people's stuff. So why not ask people whose opinions I respect that have had experiences in different industries and fields and different martial arts backgrounds to make something that's not been done. Uh, you know what, I you think know I get more out of it than anybody because it's fun and it opens up your vision point instead of being kind of stuck in a rut yeah. the stuff ends up looking like something tim kell designed because my design influence goes into what we take from use cases but i don't know i just like that aspect of it collaboration uh, well i was gonna say collaboration is a huge part of of my 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 uh, my work life career, uh, I couldn't I couldn't be successful without it. It's absolutely yeah. necessary. And and to me, working with you on the agent series was a lot of fun and felt very familiar because, um, you know, when I work with a cameraman, I ask that person his thoughts on light and and composition. Like he's right. that guy, you know. And so I would be a fool not to not to work back and forth and well I'm interested in something a little dramatic can you do that uh so exactly. I felt like I felt like you and I had a, a definite or, or I should say I feel like you're a very good collaborator it's not just like you're taking someone's design and then just producing it and putting it out there and you're also not you didn't steamroll me in any way no, no. we need to do this no. and that you and know? you weren't a diva we all know you're world famous you know you didn't you didn't play that card uh -oh. I'm I'm Bob yeah, yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah, it, it no. The ideas are the same, you know, back and forth. I There were so many things, like the jumping you mentioned earlier, when you yeah. were like, and you were really careful because that was kind of one of the first suggestions that you had that you wanted to, to see in there to, to kind of feel me out of how I was like, yep, I love it. Let's do it. Yeah. And then we backed into spacing. How do we want to do it? How do we want to execute it? Where do we want it? It just makes for a better blade if you don't have an ego. If you're just I'll, like, let's make something good. Yeah, yeah. I also remember with the with the jimping uh, part, yep. uh, your guys had just finished and they were so excited. And I was like, but we need to add jimping. And you're like, God, they're not going to like this. But uh, I did. They did it. <laughs> but they, they did, did it. And it, beautiful, beautiful job. Uh, okay, I want to talk about some other knives too because you got other things coming, coming down the pike. Uh, something I'm very excited about and still have yet to pre-order but must is the new adversary which yes. is based on one of my favorites the combatant tell me about yes. the adversary so here here's it in resin i i'm i don't have the metal prototypes we just changed some tool pathing on this this week but we mm -hmm. do have them done so we'll show them in the wild soon but this is going to be more of your fighting worn cliff where the o2 is a utility mm -hmm. style blade it's very very thin but i wanted to rather than put a a spine that raises like a lot of my other stuff. I want to do a departure and drop that away mm -hmm. because the shape of the combatant itself lends to this shape of your palm. So the whole thing aesthetically kind of mm -hmm. curves away. So I wanted to be able to put my thumb in that same 
point and the combatant like you you and me are the same i love the way the combatant feels in hand yeah and it carries so well it I'm does very and, very excited about this so too. so looking at the adversary that is uh what 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 nerds would call a true worn cliff because it, it's right. got that that constant uh dip down to the tip or constant arc down to the tip uh, but also when you're holding it in your hand and you're talking about the overall arc of the spine um which you also see in the combatant uh yep. with that straight edge it really puts into sharp relief how it it cants the edge downward yes uh, at an angle so that when you're cutting with the it's it looks What's like it when you're going to be cutting with the adversary you're going to be collecting the material in that triangle that happens here near your, yes right yep that's exactly why and it, it's one of those things where you ask me how do you know when your eye sees it and from the use cases that we're familiar with you know that that trap in that v that's going to be maximally effective yeah it puts the tip just a little bit further forward. Yes, and and also uh, it makes it handier for what uh, your your use case is ninety nine point nine eight percent of the time, which is Fruit. opening boxes, opening letters, whatever you're <laughs> yeah. doing. Um, that way, you, you got a little more clearance on the blade. Yeah. So is is the combatant slash adversaries series something you plan on growing with different blades as well? Due to the yeah, great you want to? I'm gonna step off camera and grab the next prototype. Oh yeah, I'd love to, love to see it. So I haven't uh, ground the pebbles in yet. Mm -hmm. So there's a Ooh. Tonto. Nice. So it'll have that really aggressive lean that I'm kind of known for. Mm -hmm. But we've got it all 3D'd out. This one we watered it out just to make sure everything fit with the handles. So it'll have, it'll be pretty similar to the 07 in grind. So there. Okay, so a little bit of a swedge on top to thin out yes. the tip and yep, exactly. So it'll you know, and that angle is exactly the same as the hawk. So this is the ringer, the night oh, hawk. Yeah. That's so it'll look like this. Okay, but Tim, you, you need a subscription service. Like I'm like I need all of these, <laughs> and I need them showing up. Slow down on a regular i know you don't that's uh so i wanted to just mention here that you recently had a um i don't even know what to call it a dr not a drive it not a drop like a uh, six models you're like well, we're going to be making these six models the adversary was one of them um right. and the the 002 and 003 and a couple of other models uh tell us about a what those models were that people can now sign up to get but also b give us a little hint about your business model overall We've tried to keep everything as a cash-based business. And so we'll do a reservation. When we get the steel, we allow people to reserve those blades on a three to six month turn. We thought we were going to move away from that this year. And when we did, people resoundingly said, nope, I like your way of doing it. So we'll sell enough of the steel to cover the manufacture of the entire batch. So if I sell 100 blades, I'm making 400 of them. So that nice. first 100 of a new blade, one allows me to gauge interest, which one's going to sell out fastest so that I can immediately order more steel mm -hmm. for subsequent batches, like with the Agent 01. That thing sold crazy fast, three days, 500-something blades. So I, I knew that was our most successful. I just I order reorder steel before we're even done making that subsequent batch. So it allows me to be more nimble hmm. and do smaller batches and to continue to fund because we don't want to be owned by another larger company because we kind of like the way we're doing stuff. So we want to call the shots on that. And for us to be able to do that, we do these reservations. So when somebody orders a blade, we physically have the blade in hand. So we're not selling the idea of a blade. I know some other companies have gotten themselves in trouble from selling a nothing. Yeah. Just a, a, a plate. Survive knives. Life. Survive knives. I think that was their ultimate downfall. They were making these incredible knives, but I think they were overextended. And um, yeah. not to bring up other other people, but I I, I think they're a cautionary tale because amazing yeah, that, knives. That was what well, I was saying that that's what happened. So. If we don't have the steel, we don't sell a reservation slot. So effectively, you're just signing your name on that piece of steel that you get one. And if 
there is a enough, enough steel for you to click buy, you you're going to get a blade within that time frame. It just has so to we, be finished up and and, right. and shipped, and it's all custom. I mean, your knives are custom knives, and you offer all the different handle materials. You offer different steels, right. like eighty we CRV two. Or, yeah, we were just gonna go to. All right, we've got forty four in black and forty four in OD and forty four in brimstone, but people are like, no, I like a la yeah. carte. I like picking this, and our new website that should be done this week is gonna allow for you to see a live picture. Select the blade, the screws, the handle, and it'll pop up each little piece that you change on the screen live. So you'll still. Uh, I almost made a mistake, but we listen to our fans. So we like, okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I, I love the idea of being able to see a live picture of your custom knife. It, it reminds me, my my dad, I've told, I told this story before, but my dad uh, used to go onto the Bentley website. He's like, I have no plans on buying a Bentley, but. If I did, this is what it would look like. And he would customize it and you could see it turn around. And after a few minutes, he'd be like, all right, I had my Bentley, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's the same. Exactly. To be able to see it in brimstone or to be able to see it in, uh, I mean, you have, you have all these like super cool burl G tens, you know, it's not just black and blue, it's black and blue burl. So each layer is a swirl as opposed to uh, separation of layers. I, I just love how uh, you can personalize your stuff. I feel like I'm, being your salesman right now, but I, I just love how oh, you go ahead. <laughs> and and but also the nickel boron coating that's a USP for you guys, unique selling right. proposition. You also have the bl blackened blades sometimes, you can get uh stainless or uh or um high carbon that's near stainless, and then you have the boron coating anyway. It may as well be, as far as I see it. I don't know, yeah. That. Nickel boron's super slick and very, very hard. So lots of stuff going on, but there's uh, one thing I want to talk about. And I saw on your um, uh, thumbnails from this past week's live and I oh, yes. uh, experienced them. Let's talk about the folder, the folder. And they, these have a special marking to them. The aforementioned camera wife. So if you can see, these are going to be from her line. If I can get this thing to not be crazy. Well, you can't see, but oh, there we go. Yeah, we got uh, almost there. It is. So that's the CW logo. So the CW for camera wife, and then there's a little TK oh. logo. One of our patrons designed this logo, and then the TK on the side because we do everything together. But I was really trepidatious to do that. a folder, and this this particular this batch is going to fund our hundred percent American made folder. So. So is that to say this is a foreign produced folder and it's kind of the first one where you're kind of working out the R and D and such? That's exactly right. That is why it's taken so long to come out. So Man, the, the, cool. yeah, it's a neat premise. I don't think anybody's done it. We're, it's, it's mission EDC is what we're calling it. Mm -hmm. So the mission is to have an EDC folding knife and this is called the M2. It's a, the mini mercenary. So we can, I don't know if you have a mercenary. I don't. It, the mercenary and the sapper are two knives that, sadly, I don't have yet. I shouldn't have worn a black shirt. But, so this is the mercenary. If you'll notice, the grip is the same grip and this the same swedge on the blade as well. Yeah. So, it's a shortened version of this. Originally, I wanted these scales to fit on this knife, but we just couldn't get that execution done. Oh, that because would be of the, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the pivot wouldn't work. So if you notice, it's got the lashing screws too, which was another thing that drove the engineers oh, yeah. crazy. And you can switch the clip. It's ambidextrous. These are in VG10, and these are black titanium coated. And they're on bearings, so they are crazy smooth. So the first two colors are going to be peanut butter and chocolate, I guess. It's too I'm dark. All, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about that peanut butter and chocolate. That's Man, awesome. so good. Uh, what? So, uh, what are? I know that you suffered. A f not suffered. You you uh, you went on a journey, let's say, of engineering, figuring out how to how to yeah. do a folder. And I know that the lock type was a sticking point for you. It was. Uh, it it took was. you a while to to figure out what I've, you wanted to zero in on. Uh, tell us a little bit about that that process. So, 
I'm not much of a folding knife guy because I've broken so many. So it was one, a departure for me to do something not battle tough or that I could take the job site and just stick in a door and try to pry it open. So that's why I went with the mercenary one, but then I wanted a lock that was really strong and I really had to rely on the community to suggest to me what was going to be strong, but still functional. That's not going to fail. You know, so everybody voted on the button and that's kind of how we do it on our Patreon. As you're probably aware, we vote on everything. So button lock was what we chose. This is the one I made. And so here's the problem. It won't open unless you push the button. That's my lack of knowledge. So we originally, this is nickel boron, AEBL, all of our stuff made in house. So we, we went to a designer and said, Hey, we need help. We cannot get this thing. And I asked and asked and asked and asked. Somebody help me with this stupid folder and nobody could give me any direction. And everybody told me the same thing. If you want to make a folder, you got to make it overseas. And I didn't want to do that. So we sent the button out to have it engineered. And they sent back an entire knife and said, look, we can do this for you. And that's kind of when the wheels started turning. Like, all right, if we buy X number of these from you, just give us the buttons and we'll throw the rest of the stuff away. But that didn't make a lot of sense. And the quality was so high. We asked our patrons and they said, hey, we'll buy those to help you find somebody in the States. So we're like, all right, I agreed to that. That's so cool. And then that was their idea. And then we have worked it out with uh, uh, Rickman. So we're going to, that's who's going to make our American folder. Oh. They've already reverse engineered and engineered a better mechanism into the production line, which I am incredibly excited about. So those will I'm be. Sorry, who, who did you say? Rickman. Brickman. Rick, R E C. Our, River's oh, Edge. Oh, 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 River's Edge Cutler. Got you, got yep. you. That's right. I remember. They were right across from you. Uh, that's how that happened. That's the, He walked over. He's like, I see you. You've got a folder. I'm like, man. And he's like, we make folders. And I'm like, I need a person to make folders. He's like, your boots has been crazy. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. We're clogging up the aisle. And he's like, we can do it. I'm like, how come you didn't pop up on my radar? And he's like, I don't know, but we want to do it. So we started talking. We've already exchanged all of our 3D files. And they're working on it now. So, so as soon cool. as we pull the trigger on, we get these done, the the prototypes, and we're going to get all the feedback that we need, any tweaks we need to make. So it's kind of a neat premise of it's crowdfunding, but you get an actual blade that you can use and give us feedback on. That's a great idea. I, I love that. And it also, you know, I like the idea of kind of working things out. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to say on the cheap, but you know, there are certain places that are used to doing that. So it costs less for them to do that kind of R and D and to do that kind of production. You get what you need. Your, yeah. your loyal patrons yeah. buy it. And, and by the way, that's extremely collectible for them. Uh, Cause that'll be the one time probably that you do exactly. that. Yep. And they'll have that collectible first. Uh, first. The run. hardest part of getting those guys to wait. They're like, I want it now. I'm like, no, let us get all the bugs worked <laughs> out. Cause these are, these are our final prototypes on it, and it's been, gosh, I think we took that first prototype that I showed the the multicam one to Blade Show two years ago. I Damn. scrapped the entire project, and then somebody reached out and said, "Hey, I know I've seen pictures of your folder, but you never came out with it. We can help." I'm like really, but I want to make my stuff in the states. I'm like, well, we'll help you design it. You can buy the lock design from me, and I'm like, hey, that might be a good idea because we over engineered it. It's just, it's a lot harder than you think. Uh, uh, to me, the button lock uh, seems like a really hard one. I mean, it, the, the interface is awesome. Uh, we, we all know it's fidgety and it's fun and all that. Yep. But, uh, but it also is a challenge to make a real stout one. I know you ran into it. Uh, I know other yep. companies run into it. And it takes, you know, it takes some doing it. it you know, it's not just, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I know that button locks have had a, a speckled, passed until they locked it in now it seems like everyone knows how to do them and that's great but getting there um i don't exactly. know I, the guys at river's edge i said hey you know my use cases for these things yeah, they gotta yeah. they gotta be battle tough if we gotta scrap the button 
let's do it. Yeah. Really? I'm like, yeah, this is what you guys do. You know, you make folders and locks. And if we're going to put a TCAL logo on the thing and yeah. guarantee it for life, like all of our stuff, you come to me and you tell me, hey, we got to do something different. I'm going to listen because I don't know how to make a button or a folder or a lock mechanism. I like cool stuff. So we're, we're kind of giving them carte blanche on it because I don't want just fidgety. I want fidgety and strong. And I don't want just a decent opening. I want it on yeah. bearings and all these things. So it, we kind of threw the gauntlet at them. And they're like, yeah, we got it. No problem. And the end result of the, the protos that we have now, they're super good. Uh, I mean, again, that is, the, that is, to me, the best of collaboration. That's the best approach to being a collaborative uh, a creator because everyone i mean you're you're tim kell of tkl knives you want it to be a great knife that people yeah. talk about you want it to be profitable you want it to be profitable for everyone and it to, to be a, a a net positive um and you know so to collaborate without ego and to say hey you get yeah you do that and we'll take it we'll buy it from you and we'll incorporate it that is absolutely the way to go and and so as we wrap here I'd, you have been handling a lot of fast growth over yeah. you know, a five-year period of time uh at, at most five-year period of time yeah. you've done amazing things grown incredibly have created so many um really memorable knives that you keep producing i think you've only retired a few models here and there yeah just a couple which will probably end up coming back so what do you how, what advice would you give uh people with small companies or companies that they uh, want to grow in terms of balancing handling growth, but not over committing and endangering yourself. Is that, is that a balance you got to come up with? Yeah. I mean, for us, we were very prayerful about every step and I can't recommend that more than to listen to your customer base and to wherever you center your faith that's been the magic to us most of it out from the outward side is kind of keeping our finger on our customer if we do this what do you guys think and listening intently to feedback input and after all your name is on something and if you're going to take pride in that you want the end user to use it so you can just like we keep saying the ego thing if it's not going to grow, don't force it to grow. Do what the customers suggest. Not be pulled in a million different directions. That's not what I mean. But as far as, well, hey, if you guys start making your blades completely overseas, we're not going to buy them. Well, listen to that. Don't do that. Yeah. You know, if they say, have you thought about this blade on this model and this and that? And I think responsibly growing. I'm probably talking in circles. I'm making absolutely no sense. I wish I knew the secret to my success, <laughs> but we just have listened. We're very, my wife and I have a heart for people and we really want to make good stuff and caring about what you put out and not doing more than you can handle without keeping that same level. I guess I could suggest that what I always say, we want to make as many blades as we possibly can at or above our current quality level and that's it so master where you're at figure out how to make more at the same level and then just keep stepping up and if something falters take it don't be afraid to take a step back and just get that down okay i i can make 12 i want to make 24. how in the world can me as one dude make 24. well for me it was get help from my wife you know put the right people in the right places that are better at stuff than you mm -hmm. and do it right every time. Love it. Thanks so much, Tim. Thanks for coming back on Absolutely. the show. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Uh, I've been talking all day about what a great collaborator you are, but you are also with your crowd, with your, with your fans, with your weekly check-ins. I, I can imagine that that's got to be one of the most valuable uh, parts of your marketing scheme. Yeah, I think if it you wasn't guys for that, we wouldn't do it. You guys are awesome, and it feels like family when you go to your table. And uh, so uh, everyone, check out TKL Knives. I know you probably already have if you're not living under a rock. Check out TKL Knives, everything he has coming up. Uh, Tim, thank you so much, man. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Bob.
Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Kell of T. Kell Knives. Uh, always so cool to have him and just good to talk to him on the phone sometimes because uh, uh, the man knows what he's talking about. And it's uh, I always get a vicarious buzz hearing about all the different challenges and uh, rewards of owning and running a super awesome knife company right here in the United States. All right. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. Oh, no, wait, that's Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives. Wednesday, of course, the midweek supplemental and check out the videos and shorts as they pop out. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.